Hello, everybody. Good morning, good afternoon, and good evening, depending on where you are in this amazing world. My name is Donovan Jolly, and welcome everybody once again for another amazing video of DIY investing. For today's video, we're going to be breaking down the big picture cycle of Bitcoin, analyzing where I believe the projected cycle pop will be, and basically putting to rest all of the FUD around the market is actually turning bearish, and a lot of people exclaiming that we're going to be falling to new lows. I wanted to make this video easy to understand for anybody, even the most novice of traders, people that don't know anything about trading, I wanted to be able to help you guys visualize the emotional psychology, as well as taking a look at the average thought process that actually plays through somebody who's just getting invested into a market. Oftentimes, these markets are designed to chop you up, make you lose your money, and redistribute that wealth back to the smart money and the long-term investors. So for today's video, it's important that you guys understand exactly how they do this, how they manipulate you, and the average thought process that the person losing money is going to go through. This video is going to help you guys out a lot. I've really gone through and simplified some of the key understandings in a way that's easy to understand. So I know that you guys are going to find great value in this video. If you're new and just finding this channel, always remember to do me a favor by leaving a like, comment, and subscribing to this channel for more updates. Always remember to click that notification bell so you don't miss out on any of these amazing videos like the one provided for you here. And make sure you guys sign up and join the Discord server of over 21,000 members are growing. Links are in the description for the people that want to join my community. On top of that, if you're new, looking for an extra educational study guide and a resource to be more profitable, I also have a free ebook that's also linked in the description that you guys can download. So check it out. Links are all in the description. And with all that being said, guys, let's jump right into this amazing video today. So this was actually a tweet that I sent out and it was basically just to help you guys visualize how these big picture cycles work along with Elliott Wave Theory. Now guys, Elliott Wave Theory is something that I personally follow inside of bigger picture market cycles because every single cycle follows these Elliott Waves almost identically. Now for you guys that maybe don't know what Elliott Waves are, let's quickly talk about what that is. This is pretty much a rough example of Elliott Wave Theory. Now basically what Elliott Wave Theory states is that markets behave in waves of human emotion. So you have three impulse waves. The odd numbers are impulses, the even numbers are corrections. And you have three of these. One, two, and three, right? And then you get a bigger picture ABC correction. I oftentimes talk about ABC corrections on this channel, and this is always what takes place after a three-wave impulse on the upside. So the way this works is inside of every wave, you're gonna get three impulse waves. One, two, three, four, five, ABC. And that completes wave one. Then we do it again. One, two, three, four, five, ABC. Then we do it again. One, two, three, four, five, ABC, right? And one of the cool things to understand is how you actually dictate what the waves are gonna look like. So wave one is the smallest Elliott wave. It's what starts the beginning of the bull trend. It's what starts the Elliott wave impulse from the beginning. And this is where the smart money accumulates. They accumulate in the one wave. They create the one wave from buying the lows of the cycle. And then we get this first little impulse with three impulse waves inside of that. And then this takes us to wave three, right? Now wave three is the second wave. And oftentimes it's the biggest. There's the most volume inside of this wave. And that's because all of the retail investors that watched the smart money make this first cycle are now buying in at the same time, causing the market price to get overextended greater than wave one. You, you can't have wave three smaller than wave one. It has to be at least the same size, but generally it's about twice as big, sometimes even larger than that. And then we get another correction, and this is what takes us into wave five. Oftentimes wave five and wave one are generally about the same size. Sometimes wave five can actually overextend and be closer to the size of wave three. So it really depends. In commodities like crypto, like gold, silver, oil, things like that, oftentimes wave five gets really overextended. And especially in major bubble market cycles where we have tons of hype, wave five will get very parabolic. And so this is a brief understanding of Elliott wave theory. Now, the chart that I wanted to share with you guys before we jump into it, I wanted to quickly talk about how the Elliott Wave cycles have lined up for Bitcoin up to this point. We're going to go over here and we're going to take a look at all of the impulses for Elliott Wave and I'm going to give you guys a perfect visualization into how they've all looked throughout prior history of Bitcoin cycles, right? So we're going to start down here at the very beginning of Bitcoin and we're going to analyze the Elliott Wave cycles here. So wave one is what starts the hype. 
Wave one is generally the smallest. It's one that goes kind of under the radar because that's where smart money accumulates and it's what starts the impulse. And so most people are still calling it a scam. Most people don't think it's gonna do anything. And then that's what takes us into our wave three. And then that's what takes us into wave five. Now, sometimes wave five can get really overextended. In the case of Bitcoin's first cycle, wave five was the biggest impulse. And so it really depends in the market. But with commodity markets, you're oftentimes going to see an overextension in wave five. Sometimes it's the same size as wave three. Sometimes it's bigger than both of them. And so we can see the same thing happen here in the next cycle. This was wave one. This was wave three. And then this was wave five. This is the first cycle that actually follows a little bit closer to conventional Elliott waves. And let's actually draw the wave so it's easier to see. We can see how big wave three was, right? Wave three is generally the biggest, and this is kind of the way most of these Elliott waves will go. And then we can see wave five was a little bit bigger than wave one, but overall it's pretty close to the same size. This one follows really closely to what this chart shows right here. And so this is what takes us to the 2017 cycle. And once again, we do pretty much the same thing. One, two, three, four, and then five, right? Pretty much that same sort of trend where wave three is the biggest, wave five is bigger than wave one, gets very overextended, right? Now, this is what takes us to the current cycle. And this is why I wanted to share with you guys this specific chart today as a way to help you guys visualize and understand from a deeper perspective the average emotions, the average thought process that goes into Elliott waves, right? And I've made this in a really easy to understand way, right? So I've gone ahead and I've put the Bitcoin chart, all of its Elliott waves that we've had thus far, because remember guys, we haven't finished wave five. We're still going to be getting a wave five parabolic impulse, the end of the Elliott wave cycle, the end of the bull run and the four year cycle. And that's gonna be coming at the end of the year. And so we're gonna go through here and just talk about the average thought process and generally a, a good, description of what these Elliott waves are and how they work. So wave one is where the smart money buys early and starts the bull trend. Smart money accumulates in wave one. This is the first impulse. It's after the major bear market when the market's been crashing, they're down 70, 80, 90% in value from the all time highs. And nobody's trying to buy the bottom. Nobody wants to catch the falling knife. Everybody's so scared that it's just gonna crash and go to nothing. And that's where smart money comes in and they accumulate and they start accumulation. And that was when Bitcoin was at $3,200. And then Bitcoin went from 3,200 all the way up to 14K. And that was the impulse, right? And we have three impulse waves, waves exactly the same as here. One, two, three, four, five, ABC. This is wave one for Bitcoin. And we can see it right here. One, two, three, four, five. A, B, C, right? Same exact um, rule of thumb based off of this first impulse. Now, this is the average thought process that's going through the smart money's head. And notice how big of a brain he's got. He's got such a large brain for buying the bottom that he's sitting on it as his own chair. I would love to be that smart. Even though people assume this is a scam, I think this could be revolutionary, right? So the average sentiment is, oh, this is a scam. It's going to zero. Don't ever buy it. Short the bottom, all of this stuff. And the smart money is coming in and saying, you know what? Everybody's really bearish. Everybody's calling this a scam. Sentiment's really low. I think now is the time I want to jump in. And that's what starts this first impulse, right? Now, this is what takes us to wave three. And this is where Bitcoin went from about $3,800 all the way up to 65000 That was wave three for Bitcoin cycle. Now, wave three is when retail investors feel left out and jump in together. This causes the biggest impulse of the cycle with the most volume, right? So like I said in over here, Wave three is oftentimes the biggest, right? This is where the most volume comes in. This is where retail investors jump in heavily. And kind of the thought process that's going through their head is, did you hear so-and-so got rich buying Bitcoin early? We better get in now before we get left out, right? And this is where they bring all of their buddies. They're exclaiming, oh man, I watched this guy get so rich buying it so early. I feel like I'm getting left out. He says it's a good buy. I'm jumping in right now. And that's where we get the big overextension in wave three, right? And now wave four is where we get the correction. This is where Bitcoin went from 65,000 all the way down to 29,000 here. And so where we're at today, we've bounced off of those lows at 29,000. And this is the very, very beginning stages of wave five, right? And so wave five is the final impulse of the cycle where smart money who bought wave one begins to take profits. Retail continues buying, assuming it will go up forever. This technology is the future. I need to invest my life savings and leverage my property to get in. 
bottomless pit, right? So this is the average psychology from a very, I mean, basic understanding principle. And this is the way that most people are going to be investing into this market, right? I mean, me and a lot of other people that watch this channel got in early on in this first impulse we bought really low at the very beginning of the cycle and we've been holding ever since, right? Many people have already taken profits up here, but for the most part, all of the people that have been down in here are still holding knowing that we're going to get continue to get one more big move to close out the end of the year. Now, the average person, guys, and this comes when we're at the last point of the cycle and all of the institutions, all of the corporations, all of the smart money people that accumulated down here, they need exit liquidity, right? They have all of this money and all of this profit that they've made from buying early on. And so now that the cycle is gearing up for wave five, they need exit liquidity. And so this is where you're going to see a lot of media attention, which we've already seen. We've already seen a lot of famous athletes, a lot of famous musicians um, and different people like that jumping in onto NFTs. And this is what is going to happen at the tail end of the cycle. You're going to see a lot of marketers like Ty Lopez, like Grant Cardone, and some of these big people are going to be jumping in on the trend to make a quick bu buck at the end of the cycle. And this is where you're also going to see a lot of media attention starting to shill the markets. And so this is where we get wave five. And wave five is when wave wave five is when all of the people who bought on early down here begin to take profits. Now, with crypto cycles, wave five can get overextended, like I pinpointed here. In the first cycle, we saw a very big overextension. But if we drop it off of a log chart, I think you guys will be able to understand how big wave five can get. So wave wave three was really big in 2012 and 2013, but wave five was still very massive. It just looks a little bit smaller on a log scale chart. Same thing can be said for 2017, right? Wave three was pretty big, but wave five was just very vertical, basically no pullbacks, and it went hugely on the upside. Lots of profit potential to be made in that cycle, and that was wave five. That was the blow off top. And so we're now gearing up for that same thing. We finished wave one, we finished wave three, and we're getting ready for that blow off top into wave five. On the log scale, chances are this wave five is gonna look shorter than this three wave. But when we actually take it off of a log chart and it's on a linear chart, I bet this wave five ends up making this three wave look small. And that's generally the way it's going to work every single time. I bet it ends up looking similar to the 2013 cycle because this four wave correction that we're seeing inside of Bitcoin from 65K down to 29K looks just like we saw back here in 2013. And then this is what happened shortly after, a pretty much just sheer parabolic move parabolic all the way up, no pullbacks. And I think that that's really what we're gearing up for to close out the end of the year in this cycle. And so this is important to understand because from a psychological perspective, when we look at the market cycle chart, I'll share with you guys where we're at today so that you guys can better understand you know, the type of hype that we're going to be dealing with as a lot of this new money floats into the market. So where we're at right now is the first sell off in the bear trap. We're at the very beginning of this new parabolic phase, right? This was the beginning when Bitcoin was at 3,200. This was the move to 65,000. This was 29K. And now we're getting ready for that big blow off top. Now inside the blow off top, this is where you're going to see media attention, enthusiasm. The public is going to get really interested. Your grandma and grandpa is going to be asking you how to buy crypto. And then this is what takes us to the very end of the cycle before we ultimately see the end of the four year cycle the top of this bull run and a big 80% crash on the downside. And so this is why I say this guy has is a bottomless pit is because most people are assuming that Bitcoin's just going to go up forever. A lot of people are exclaiming, oh man, this is the cycle where institutions have jumped in. This is the time where Bitcoin becomes so mainstream that we never have a bear market again. We'll have little tiny 20, 30% pullbacks and we'll just keep going up forever and ever just like the stock market. This was the same thing that people said back in 2017. And in fact, I was one of those dumb people that said those that sort of thing. And what happened to me? Well, I lost all of my money. I bought the very top. I held all the way to the bottom and I was just completely wrecked the entire time. And I want you guys to make sure that you don't do the same mistakes that I did. I've spent a lot of money worth of courses as well as just simply losing my money trying to figure out how to trade properly. And I've spent a lot of time every single day studying, learning as much as I possibly could to help me get an advantage over the market so I could be profitable. And I'm telling you guys right now, this is why I've stuck to big picture cycles is because with crypto, they go up so fast. They go up so much in value 
that nothing literally matters besides buying early and then holding until the tail end of the cycle. You could be one to three months off from nailing the exact top, but if you got in all the way down here, it doesn't matter because you're up so much in value that you're gonna be happy with whatever return you got. Chances are, if you bought down in here like we did, you are up handsomely in your portfolio. You've made more money than you ever dreamed possible. You're already filthy rich and you're trying to figure out, oh man, what do I do with all this money? Should I go buy this Lamborghini or should I go buy this multi-thousand acre ranch up on the mountain? And this is kind of the thought process that a lot of the smart money is going through down here. And so the thing is, guys, if you're watching this channel, if you just recently got in, maybe you got in over here at the $65,000 top, there was a lot of new money that got in towards the top of this correction. A lot of you guys have stayed. A lot of you guys have kept holding even in this dip. A lot of you guys have kept buying in this dip. But if you're one of those people that have got in a little bit late, you really need to understand that by holding multiple years by having this thought process in mind that, oh, I got in a little bit late, but it's okay. Bitcoin's the future. I'm really sold on all of this stuff. You know, I have utility tokens that are going to do super, super well. I'm going to hold for years and years and stake and earn passive income and everything will be perfect. Well, well, that is an okay strategy. I'm telling you guys right now that that strategy only works if you're down here. If you're not willing to stake at the bottom of the cycle, if you're not already thinking big picture at the very bottom, there's no reason to start thinking big picture towards the end of the cycle top. Because what's going to happen is you're going to get trapped in these psychological thinking ways. You're going to say, oh, my investments are with good companies. You know, I'm going to make all of this money. Everything is golden. You know, I can sit on my investment. I've made millions. I can earn passive and I'll be set. Well, the thing is, guys, even the greatest utility tokens, even the coins that have the most adoption, all of these hype, all of these prices are going up because of hype. They're going up because of speculation. It's always, oh, wow, I'm going to buy this. It's expensive. And, it, you know, the fees are expensive to even use it. But the prices are going to go up higher. I think it's going to go up higher than that. And so it's a lot of people are speculating on top of each other, which is causing all of these parabolic rises. At the end of a parabolic rise, there always has to be a crash. It doesn't matter how much power is behind it. There is always going to be an end to all of that, right? And it's the same way if you were to take like a garden hose or something and you were to turn on the water as high as you possibly can, it's going to go up, it's going to go up, and eventually there's a plateau point where the water there's not enough pressure to push the water higher and then it just starts kind of crumbling back down, right? There is a certain plateau that it's gonna hit. Crypto markets are the exact same way. There's all these buyers that are creating a lot of pressure on the markets to go up in value, right? Eventually, there's only so many buyers that are gonna be willing to speculate. There's only so many buyers that are gonna be willing to jump in before all of the people that are that bought down here you know, saying all of this stuff, thinking that the technology is the future, but they were buying at the bottom, they're going to be taking profits, right? And eventually the sellers are going to far outweigh the buyers and we're going to get another one of those 80% corrections. It happens every single cycle. You don't want to be the person betting against that. You don't want to be the person saying, oh, this is the cycle where everything's going to change over the last 10 years. You know, even though it's always had a bear market and crashed 80 to 90% over the last 10 years, this is the one year where it's not going to do that. I mean, do you really want to be that person inside of the cycle? I don't. I've made a lot of money and I want to keep that money because I want to reinvest that money at the bottom of the next bear cycle so I can compound. I can make so much money that I can own whatever I want. I can do whatever I want in the world and all of that fun stuff, right? That's my personal goals. And so the only way you're going to get to that point is if you're willing to sell into this wave five structure. And that's exactly what we're getting ready for, guys. Remember, when we take a time to look at the Wall Street cheat sheet, this is one of my favorite charts for a couple different reasons. Reason number one, it shows the emotions that are going to trap you into a bear market. You don't want to be the person buying all the way up into this parabolic run, right? Down here is wave one, right here is wave three, here is wave five, right? We can see the Elliott wave structure even inside of this chart itself. And the emotions are actually reciprocated through this chart. The disbelief, this rally will fail like all others. Where was the disbelief phase for Bitcoin? Well, that was over here when Bitcoin went from 3,200 to 14K and back to 3,800. This was the disbelief. Everybody was exclaiming that it was going to go to new lows, that there would never be a new bull market. And then what did Bitcoin do? It freaking rallied and went to $65,000. This is the same thing 
that happens here, disbelief. And then it goes up to hope. Oh man, a recovery is possible. This is when people start getting invested. This is when people bought the top at 65,000. They thought, oh man, this is it. This is the big one. It's going to get even bigger from here. Then we get this $65,000 correction. And now what we're getting up for now is actually this final blow off top. And so you're going to see a lot of optimism, belief, thrill, and euphoria from everybody being so rich. You're going to hear about everybody being so rich from the people that bought so early on, as well as the people that happen to get in somewhere in the midpoint and are actually making money for themselves, right? You're going to see a lot of people very bullish, a lot of people very optimistic, a lot of positive news coming out, a lot of positive news from institutions as well as governments, corporations, and things like that. You're going to hear a lot of positivity inside the market, which is ultimately going to cause this type of blow off top. Now, the big thing to understand, guys, is we will get a correction. We will get an 80% correction inside of this market. I'm so confident in saying that, and that's why I'm going to sell everything at the end of the year. It's because I know how these cycles worked. We've seen it happen over the last 12 years in running. We've seen 80 to a 90% correction that lasts generally about a year in length, and this happens every single cycle. And so you don't want to bet against that trend because that trend is arguably more strong than the four-year cycle trend that I follow. And so... These are going to be the emotions that you feel on the way in the way down. If you aren't willing to sell at the top, you're going to go through the emotional swing on the way down. The people that are telling themselves, I'm going to hold, I'm going to stake, you know, I might have got in late, but it doesn't matter. This technology is the future. This is what you're going to feel when the market does tank. You're going to regret your decision. You're going to wish that you would have sold early um, in the bull market, or I should say late in that cycle before the cycle top. Because you're going to get stuck and you're going to lose all of your money. And what you had at the top, the unrealized gain that you had, the numbers on the screen, it's going to get shrunk by 80 to 90% plus. And I'm not kidding when I say that. Your investments can be solid. They can be with good companies. But that's right here. Complacency. We just need to cool off for the next rally. This is the first lower high. Then we start correcting. Why am I getting margin calls? This dip is taking longer than expected. And then this is denial. Once everything's really crashing down and you're about to start really losing a lot of portfolio, you're going to say, my investments are with great companies. They will come back. And then this is where you get trapped into the bottom of the bear market, right? Most people aren't emotionally strong enough to hold through a bear market. I'm telling you guys as somebody who did, it was the hardest thing in my life. And most of those investments that I held through that out that time are pretty much worthless. There's a huge shakeout that takes place every bear cycle where the majority of the coins that are hyped now are not going to be the coins that are hyped in the next cycle. There are very few that actually do maintain themselves long term. But there's a lot of cryptos from that last cycle that I remember trading that are completely obsolete this cycle. You don't even hear about them anymore. They have yet to even make anywhere close to their all-time high breaks. That is what's going to happen again. And so don't get stuck in that way of thinking, guys. I just wanted to make this video as a way to literally summarize the trap that most people are going to put themselves in. Remember, we're getting up for wave five. We need to take profits into wave five. Otherwise, you're going to get stuck holding inside of a major bear market. Altcoins will correct for two to three years on average. Bitcoin will correct for a year and then it'll start the beginning of its new bull cycle. And so the best thing to do is simply just get out with your profits and then rebuy the dip. I mean, if you're really that convicted about the market, why wouldn't you want to compound all of those gains to earn even more crypto long term? That's my goal. That's the thing I didn't do in the last cycle. That's what I'm doing this cycle. And so if you guys found value in this, always remember to leave a like, comment, and subscribe to this channel. Hit that notification bell so you don't miss out on any of these amazing videos. If you guys would like to join the Discord server, join my group, or actually download my free ebook, links are going to be provided for you in the description for that. One final thought, guys, is remember that I'm actually going to be closing off the course sell, the 50% off on my video course signals and beginner course bundle. All of that is going to be closed off by the end of the month. And so if you guys have been watching this, you watch my channel, you want to get in, know what I'm taking, uh, know what trades I'm taking over the next four months where I'm going to be selling, what time frames I'm going to be selling by, as well as where I'm going to be moving that profit into, stocks, commodities, things like that. You guys are definitely going to want to join the group because this is going to be the biggest discount that I ever do. It's a great opportunity for the people that have been watching to get in early, to get in at a good discount price before you know I ultimately completely transition what this channel is going to be talking about, reinvesting into different things that have really never been talked about on this channel. So if you guys want to learn how to compound those gains, how to sell the exact cycle top, all of that's going to get taught to you inside of that signal. So go buy that. Go check it out. Links are provided for you in the description. And with all that being said, guys, I will catch you in the next one. As always, peace out.